Welcome to my Extend My Seat installation video for installing a seat extender into a 2014 Prius V. Here you see the seat as it comes originally. Uh, it's pulled all the way back. Here's the rear of the seat. And what we'll be doing is removing the seat and installing the brackets to extend it. First opening the package we'll find there are three pieces, three different brackets that come in the kit. The large one is for the outboard uh, side of the seat. The smallest piece is for the rear inboard uh, mount. And the mid-sized piece is for the front inboard mount. There are also uh, a few bolts and a nut which will complete the kit. Here's the kit of bolts, three bolts and a nut with a washer. Those are used to reattach the seat to the Extend My Seat brackets. To start with, we'll remove the plastic covers. There are four of them on each corner of the seat mount. These just pull off. Be gentle so you don't break them, but they're not hard to get off. This is the inboard rear mount. And this is the outboard rear mount. Removing these covers exposes the four bolts that are needed to remove the seat. They're 14 millimeter metric and you just need a socket wrench to remove those. Here's the front inboard mount. Uh, removing the cover there. And finally we have the front outboard mount cover. I've mounted a yellow sticky note there at the front which shows you the rearmost position of the seat as it originally was. I'll sh use that to show you how far back the seat can go once we finish the install. So we want to start with removing the two front bolts to uh, remove the seat. These are pretty straightforward. Removing the seat is the easiest part of this whole installation. The inboard rear connection is the one that's going to give you the most trouble with this install. First of all, you'll need an extender on your ratchet to conveniently remove that bolt. When we get to the part where we're installing the bracket on this location, that's going to be a little trickier because it's the one place where you need to cut through the fabric on the floor and some of the insulation that's below it. That will make room for the seat connection to be installed farther back than it already is. There are two bolts. This is the first that's being removed now. There are two bolts um, into the floor 
that the bracket will connect to. And when it comes time to actually do that, um, you may have a little trouble. You have to shift the seat around to get those uh, holes aligned with the new bracket. Here's the outboard rear mount being removed. That's pretty straightforward. Now that all four bolts are removed, you can see it's fairly easy to lift the seat up in the back or in the front. And now we'll proceed to install the large bracket, which goes under the outboard connections to the seat. Here we've got it positioned forward of where it's going to be. We need to lift up the seat and slide it in there. This is the reverse view. It just lays on top of the uh, floor and aligns with the two holes of the bolts that we've already removed. So we're going to put the first bolt in just finger tight to get it uh, aligned and positioned and then we'll proceed to the front inboard bracket. Here's the front inboard bracket, the mid-size bracket. It just lays in place just like the larger bracket. It has a foot that extends in the rear that just rests on the floor. There's no bolt there. There's just one bolt in the front. At this point, we'll position the seat farther forward than it was originally mounted. That gives us access to more room in the rear, as we're going to do the inboard rear connection next. Here's the smallest bracket that comes in the kit. It's going to be installed roughly in this position. First, we have to cut room for it through the floor fabric. Then we'll be attaching the seat to that rear bolt using the washer and the nut that comes in the kit. Then we'll position the seat down, the, or the bracket down in position and bolt it to the front two bolts um, to hold it in place. This procedure is the hardest part of the install. It's a little tricky because it takes a little finagling to get the seat positioned just right so that those final two volt bolts uh, into the floor um, can be reattached. Um, that part of the video I could not actually film because it takes two hands to do this procedure and I couldn't get the camera positioned just right. But I think you can see what, what's needed here. When I cut the fabric, um, I cut it a little bit farther than the instruction uh, installation guide says. I, I cut about six inches back and about an inch and a half uh, wide um, of the insulation underneath. You know, so it was nice and comfortable to fit the bracket and the seat down into that space.
So now we have the fabric cut and the insulation dug out. It's time to put the bracket onto the seat. Uh, oh, but first we need to remove the second bolt in this area that's a little bit ahead of the one that held the seat in place originally. Both of those bolts are going to be reinserted to hold the bracket in place after we get it attached to the seat. So here the bracket gets inserted through the hole in the seat. We use the washer and the nut from the kit. Uh, at this point you want to connect those all up nice and snug um, because all you need to do is position the bracket um, after you get it down um, into the hole you, that you've cut. So you want to give it a nice snug connection at this point. Here you see the seat positioned almost fine in the final position for bolting on that bracket. I found it was a little tricky to get the bracket close enough to the floor to reseat those bolts. So what I ended up doing was shifting the whole seat a little bit, um, twisting it a little bit to the right. The outboard bracket um, was pushed to the left. The front inboard um, corner was pushed to the right and that angled this bracket a little closer to the seat, uh, to the floor and that allowed me to bolt those two bolts in. Um, but it was a little tricky. It, it might help to get um, an extra pair of hands to help with that part. Here's, you can see the uh, outboard rear corner of the seat that's been pushed out to the left a little with, and together with the front inboard corner pushed to the right a little that helped align that bracket up so that I could get those two bolts in. Now we're back at the front and it's time to attach the seat to the two brackets there. Here we're going to use two of the three bolts that come in the kit. This is pretty straightforward. You just position the seat above the two holes and the bolt should go right in. We're almost done here, um, so it's time to uh, tighten all four bolts in the front, the ones we had finger tightened before, as well as the two that hold the seat to the bracket.
course, once the uh, bolts are all tight, the final step in the front is to put the plastic covers back on and test to make sure the seat slides back and forth freely. Notice that uh, now the seat, when you extend it all the way back, is a good four or five inches farther back than that yellow sticky note, which was the most uh, the rearmost position that it was capable of. In the rear, when it's fully back, there is no leg room for the rear seat. You can see that here compared to the other side of the car. Uh, of course, you can put a baby seat on that rear seat behind the driver. Note also that the rubber mat behind the driver will not fit any longer because the mount has been moved back and it goes under the rubber mat. You can cut the rubber mat to fit or just stop using it. I've decided not to use it for a while. Also, the inboard rear plastic cover also does not fit because the seat rail is now lower than it used to be and so the plastic cover is too high. I've decided to just leave mine off. You might want to try and trim it to fit. So that's it from a happy Extend My Seat customer. Total time about one hour.